You probably know that there are certain attributes that you can set in Houdini that will have an effect on your viewport, like P-Scale, it's a pretty common one. However, there's some that you may not be aware of, so let's take a look at some of the more obscure ones. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. If you wanna grab it, you can do so on there. All it is is just gonna be taking a look at some of these attributes because I was going through the documentation recently and I saw this again, and I haven't seen this in a while, uh, just kind of something that I forgot about, but I figured maybe somebody would find some use out of some of these. So let's take a look at what they are. So we just have some geometry here. We have a attribute wrangle here set to detail. And then once we look at it, you can see that it's going to display this wireframe view. So almost all these are going to, or actually all of them do work on the detail attributes. So make sure they're set to, to detail. And then we're going to have this GL underscore for most of these as well. And we are gonna have them almost always as an integer. So in this case, GL underscore wireframe equals one is going to set our viewport display as a wireframe for that object. So if I set this back to zero, you can see that this is your normal, but anything other than one, so if I set this to two, it's going to display as a wireframe. So we'll leave that as one. Now we have a helix here. This is just a curve. So I'm converting this to a curve and I'm using this shade open curves as our detail attribute. So we have this GL underscore shade open curves set to one. That's going to display our geometry like a ribbon. So this is similar to like what you'd see in the Solaris viewport when you have a, a curve that's being imported into Solaris. Sometimes it displays like this. And then we can set the width as well. Interestingly enough, we set the width on the detail section and it actually works you don't have to set this on like the points or anything like that. You can just set this in the detail and it will work for that as well. So we can set this down to something smaller and it will affect our size. We would obviously move it up to something larger. And if we disable it all together, you can see that it displays kind of like this. So not exactly all that useful, but if you want to view what it's looking like as a ribbon, then you want to have that width attribute present along with this GL underscore shade open curves. The next one we have is again, just a sphere and we are setting the lit attribute. So we can set this to zero. If we don't want it to be lit, the default is going to be one. This is going to be what it's shown in your, your normal viewport. I actually haven't, I think this is all, yeah. Anything other than one, I guess it's an, integer so anything but one or zero i guess we'll set it to a um unlit or a sorry a lit sphere if you set it to zero it's going to set it to be unlit so you can control things that way um, again maybe not super useful but maybe you want to use that for certain things this next one is a little bit interesting. So we have a sphere here. I'm just converting it to just be lines here in order to just show what this does. So I've got two lines here. This is actually two things. So we have this GL underscore show all points set to one. This defaults to zero, both of these do. And then we have GL sphere points set to one as well. So if I just disable the second one, this is going to not be apparent as to what's going on, but it's going to allow us to put in this sphere points and shade these all as spheres. So if I just disable this line real quick, you can see that without this line, it's only going to shade our spheres as, or shade our points as spheres if they're unconnected. So if I just add in maybe like an add node and I create a point, and I merge these, we should see that we have a sphere in the middle now. So any unconnected points are going to be set to be shown as spheres or rendered as spheres in your viewport. If I turn this back on, again, we will get back that viewport visualization as spheres. And also interestingly enough with this, I don't know if it's able to or not, um, with it set to or a different way, maybe it doesn't use the width attribute. If we set this to be like three or something really large, you can see that that doesn't actually affect our sphere size. Maybe with P scale, I haven't tried P scale. No, I think about it. 
So I guess you have to set it to P scale, which is interesting. So you can control the size of your spheres in that manner just by setting your P scale attribute, which can give you a good idea of you know kind of what your objects are going to look like if um, you're copying you know points without actually having to copy to points. I bet you this actually has a lot um, a lot cleaner overhead than it is to just you know, copy to points. So you can kind of see maybe what your particle simulations would look like with a better overhead. I don't know that for sure. I haven't actually tested that, um, but I'm guessing that that's going to give you a better overhead uh, for your viewport. So something to to test out. I'll probably test that out after this. And uh, yeah, there's a pretty interesting little attribute that you can add there. So next I've added in this pig head and just cleaned off the UVs, every, all the attributes there. And we can add in this, this is the one that's different. So it's gonna be a float and it's VM underscore cusp angle. And then I've just set it to this, this channel float so I can control the angle. So basically this is gonna work as like your normals, how your normals are displayed. So if I start bringing this down and let's actually flip over to our, without our wireframe. So shift W to get rid of that wireframe in the viewport. If I start to lower this down, you can see how that is starting to affect our geometry. If I bring it all the way down to zero, you can see we get this really faceted look. So this is kind of like your normals and how that's going to be displayed. So if you wanted to use this for whatever reason, then you can do that. Now, there are a couple of other attributes that you can set on the geometry uh, that are available in the docs. They're more for sprites and stuff. I'm not gonna take a look at those. I don't ever really use um, sprite visualization, so I'm not going to cover those, but they are available as well, um, along with, you know, all of the other things that you can do with attributes in that documentation page. So definitely take a look at that, but this is some attributes that you can use in your viewport to do some various things. I thought they were kind of interesting, something that I forgot about. I learned, you know, really early on when I was learning Houdini, but um, kind of forgot about it. Check out the documentation page. Hopefully this has helped you out. It's a little interesting, obscure tip. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.